Every good Southern preacher titles their sermon. The title is two words, Silent Saturday. Everybody say Silent Saturday. Now I got to go with this. Everybody go with me. Watch close and hear me out. Listen to the words. Easter was just around the corner. Every pastor, priest, padre, father, they all focused on two days. Either Friday when Jesus died for the sin of the world or Sunday when Jesus rose again. But you ain't hear nobody talk about Saturday because you know why? Saturday had nothing. Now I'm going to give you some Southern language 101. You notice I said nothing. I did not say nothing because in the South, if you got nothing, you still got I-N-G. But if you got nothing, you pull with no R. That's as black as it's going to get this morning. So watch this. Jesus is silent on Saturday. The women anointed his body and placed him in Joseph's tomb. The cadaver of Christ was as mute as the stone that was over the, the grave entrance. Jesus spoke on Friday. He spoke when he said, I will take the sin of the world and I'll die for them. He spoke on Friday when he says, I will do this. He spoke on Friday when he looked at a thief and he said, today you will be with me in paradise. On Sunday, Jesus action spoke. Jesus spoke when the dead man came out of the tomb holding the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And he did it for you and me. But on Saturday, nothing. Everybody say nothing. Are y'all with me so far? So God himself, oh, God spoke on Friday. Boy, did God speak. He made the sun disappear without an eclipse. God spoke on Friday. Boy, did he speak. The curtain that separated man from God was ripped in two. So you can go to God on your own now. God spoke Friday. The Bible says that when Jesus died and hung his head, every dead person in the graveyard came back to life. A word. That's something else right there. I couldn't help but always think about what about the dude who died and his wife married his best friend? And this dude came back from the dead and walked home and knocked on the front door. <laughs> Lifetime channel ain't got nothing on the word of God, y'all. I'm just saying, just saying. On Sunday, God spoke when he looked at his son and said, get up, and he got up. But on Saturday, nothing. Everybody say nothing. I need to explain to you what I'm talking about. Here's Silent Saturday. Silent Saturday is the day after the struggle and the day before the solution. Silent Saturday is the day after the question and the day before the answer. Silent Saturday is the day after the prayer and the day before the miracle. Silent Saturday is the day after you get lost and the day before you get found. Now, I thought I was in a church that was a little lively, but I went through that whole thing and only 12 people helped me out. So guess what? Nah, no, no, no. If you're in this room, you have forfeited the right to help me on this part. Everybody in the other room, this is for you. Respond after each one. Silent Saturday is the day after the struggle and the day before the solution. Silent Saturday is the day after the question and the day before the answer. The day after the prayer and the day before the miracle. The day after getting lost and the day before you get found. Hey, look at me. Silent Saturday torment is total torment for us. What did I do? Did I hurt God? Did I say something wrong? Mm. Did God, am I, have I disappointed him? God knew Jesus was in the tomb. Why didn't he do something just like you and me? God knows we're going through stuff. God knows our family's in trouble. God knows my finances are way too short for the bills that are coming in. God knows why doesn't he do something? What are we supposed to do until God does? Go back to the early 90s, that wrist bracelet that says WWJD. Remember that? 
What would Jesus do? Acts chapter two, verse 27 says this. You will not abandon me in the grave, Jesus said, nor will you let the Holy One see decay. You know what you gotta do? Do what Jesus did. What did Jesus do? Everybody ask me, what did Jesus do? You know what Jesus did in the tomb? He lied still, stayed silent, and trusted God. You know what you got to do? Lie still, stay silent, trust God. Somebody help me. Lie still, stay silent, trust God. With your family, lie still, stay silent, trust God. It's your job. Lie still, stay silent, trust God. With your past, lie still, stay silent, trust God. One more time. For five seconds, clap for him if you know he'll come through. Jesus knew God would not leave him in the grave. You need to know God won't leave you in your struggle. I said in the early service, I'll say it today. I've been one, I've known your pastor for a while. I've been trying to get here, but I just now got here. But I believe I'm here for a reason. You know what I am? I'm the biggest, blackest Hallmark greeting card from heaven you ever seen in your life. And I got to drop this now because it's about to go. We're about to go real fast, and it's, it's like a whirlwind. If you nasty, some of you southern people know what I'm talking about right there. If you a sinner, you nasty, and you love your sin, and you love your nasty nature, this is your chance. You need to get up, pretend you got to go to the bathroom, and get as far away from my voice as you can. Because the longer you stay in this room and in this sermon, the more in jeopardy your nasty life is at leaving you and the presence of God at coming into your life. So now's your chance to get out. You better run. And if you're in the other room, you better be glad you're in that room. Okay, everybody wait. You know what's real bad? You can't go now because if you get up, everybody's like, "Mm, look at her, she nasty. I knew she was going to (laughs) leave. Somebody push your neighbor and say, I didn't see this coming. (laughs) Hear me when I say this. God will not leave you alone in your struggles. His silence is not his absence. Inactivity is never apathy when it comes to Jesus Christ. Saturdays have a purpose. They let us feel the full force of God's strength. Had God raised Jesus 15 minutes after he was dead, there'd be a reason to say he was never dead. When God comes through in your situation, if he took care of you 10 seconds after it happened, you wouldn't understand the full force of who God can be in your life. Lie still, stay silent, trust God. Come on, lie still, stay silent, trust God. For that reason alone, God put a Saturday after Friday and before Sunday. Man, I feel the presence of God in this room this morning. (laughs) If today you're in Saturday... Do what Jesus did. James 5, 7 says, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, come to me. This is Jesus. Come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Lean on me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Somebody say amen. amen. If you find yourself messed up today, if you find yourself struggling with your life with Christ today, in the book of Micah 7, 8, it says, do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I have fallen, I will rise again. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. He will get you through this. Somebody say amen. All right, now look, I got to be honest. I went to school to learn how to do what I do. In public schools, I speak in public schools all over the world. And I'll be honest, uh, it's the coolest job ever. But you know what, I gotta apologize because I have not been in Orange County or Southern California for 18 years. 18 years ago, all the school administrators who ran Orange County retired or passed away. Or the devil's trying to keep us out. But he ain't going to win. 
Now look, hold on, hold on. Hear me when I say this. I did not say this in the early service, but there is a school administrator in this room or watching me. And I need you to know this. I am not able to say the name of Jesus in a public school, but I don't have to. The hope and love that we take to a public school has caused kids to hand in drugs, to hand in guns. We've caused kids to walk up to teachers and say, I can't live. I want to take my life. I need help, like that man said. And I refuse to let my career end in public schools and not get back to Southern California. I'm 60. The Lord already spoke to me that I will be done in public schools in four more years. There are people coming behind me that speak. We've trained them. They're ready to go. But with God as my witness, I will do a tour in Whittier, California. I will come to the public schools of this city, this town. I don't know how. I don't know who you are. But you could trust me and you could trust what we do. Our kids need hope. Our kids need to know there's somebody that loves them. Our kids need to know they can make it. If you agree, for five seconds, let's shout for our children who aren't even here today. Awesome. Go ahead and sit down. There's somebody here. You're going to help me. We're going to get into the schools. Listen, we do kids all the way from pre-K four through college. I've done it for, I'm 60. I started at 20. Holy smokes. That's 40 years, man. I'm old. If I trip and fall, you ladies run. Everybody's good, but you, you dead. You like a vanilla pancake. I'm just saying, no, I'm joking. All right. Everybody look at me. Here it is. Listen very carefully. I told this story today. Uh, I was in a school and the guy who helps book schools all around the world flew in to do a week tour with me and he normally doesn't. So I figured he was meeting with superintendents or school officials, but instead he came for one school on that Thursday morning. I was going to be at a school and he just wanted to see it. So when Thursday morning came, we walk in and paint this picture in your head, a school auditorium, a school gym, but there's four full court basketball courts side by side, four all the way down, full court. And I'm like, this room's huge. And they had extra speakers and sound. And all of a sudden a guy came in he goes, it's crazy. This big old school for one grade. I said, one grade. <laughs> and all of a sudden the doors open. And what my friend didn't tell me was, I was at the largest pre-K-4 school in the United States of America. There was 1,996 four-year-olds. I never asked for the rapture more than right then. But thank God I had the saxophone we played happy, clap your hands if you feel. We played frozen, let it go, let it go. Then I had to tell kids, I told them my story. I grew up in the foster care system my entire life. I'll tell you more in a second. And when I said that, all of a sudden, this little girl looked at her teacher and as everybody was quiet. And this little girl, Miss Wilson, he's like me. And this teacher just starts weeping and she turns and leaves the room. At the end of the program, it was another quiet moment, and that same little girl went, Miss Wilson, he's my daddy. <laughs> and my friend Preston started recording on his phone, and I, I, was, I was like, whoa, time out. He does like the song, hold on, wait a minute, what is going on? We did a family night, and so she, she looked at me as she left the room and says, I'm going to bring mom tonight. She brought mom that night. When it was over, the mom came up and she said, I am so embarrassed. I said, do I know you? <laughs> and she said, no, you don't. She goes, her dad was, was, was killed. He, he committed a murder and didn't get away and they shot and killed him. She's not old enough to know. So I told her, I said, one day you're going to meet the kindest, most gentle, most loving Carmelo man. And you're going to know that's your daddy. So I said, I need to see your daughter. She came over. I got on both knees and I said, you're the most precious daughter I ever known. 
and you're going to change the world. Everybody do me a favor. Touch your neighbor and say, here we go. Touch your other neighbor and say, silent Saturday. Now look at me. I had to figure out how to find someone in the Bible who could paint Silent Saturday for everyone who hears this. And I found it. It's in the book of Luke chapter seven. But in order for me to read you this story, you got to pay attention. And you know what I found out? If you want people to pay attention, do something different than anything they ever seen. So I'm going to go to Luke chapter seven, start reading in verse 11. And so you pay attention. I'm going to do it like this. In Luke chapter 7, (laughs) verse 11. Soon afterwards, Jesus went to a town called Nain. His disciples and a large crowd went along with him. You know what's really cool? When you put music, look at everybody. Everybody's like. As they approached the town gate, listen carefully, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. Mm. And a large crowd from the town was with her. Now I'm going to stop right there because I already read the perfect woman for this silent Saturday. So Jesus and the disciples and a crowd is coming to town. Leaving the city was a funeral procession. Now look who's in the funeral. Listen close. It says, the only son of his mother and she was a widow. I'm going to give it to you again. The only son of his mother, which means she had a husband. Which means she had one child. Which means she was a widow That means she had walked behind a coffin before. She had woke up thinking, how am I going to do this before? She's been to the cemetery before. She's buried the one she loved before. But the first time, she wasn't alone. She had something to hold on to. He looked like dad, smelled like dad, talked like dad. But this time... No parent should bury their child. She reached for something to help her take another step, but there's nothing there. Why me? Why does this have to be me? Some of you, that's you this morning. You woke up before the sun rose and you said, why me? I'm here to tell you, God knows. Can you imagine? With every step, she's got to bury her son next to her husband. That silent Saturday. But watch. The Bible says there was a large crowd with Jesus and a large crowd with her. At verse 13, it says this. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her. You know what's great? There are two big crowds. There's people on both sides. They're hitting the same spot. All of a sudden, Jesus didn't see a pallbearer. Jesus didn't see a dead kid. Jesus saw the mom. He saw the one in the crowd that was hurting the most. He saw the one in the crowd that was the most lonely. You're thinking you're sitting in the middle of a crowd today. You're thinking you're just watching me on the screen. But God put you in that chair. He put you in this room. He wants you to know that you, and hear me. He wants to say to you what he said to her. The Bible says when he saw her, his heart went out to her. And then he went to her and he said, don't cry. All he said was two words. Don't cry. Today he's just saying to you, don't cry. I saw your pain. I saw you. Don't cry. I'm about to make a way out of no way. I'm about to turn your darkness in the day. I'm about to be your joy in a time of sorrow. I'm about to be the hope for your tomorrow. Don't cry. 
Everybody touch your neighbor and say, don't cry. Hey, look at me. I'm going to give you what I didn't give to early service, but you got to understand something. You got to understand, you got to understand who's talking to you today. I, I, pastor says, he always says like that I'm the definition of love because I love people I've never seen before. The only reason I can do that is because of who I am. You see, a man got up on a Monday morning to go to work like he did every Monday. He could smell the toast and coffee because his wife got up while he was in the shower. Before he went downstairs in their little apartment, he walked into a room and kissed his son. Then he walked into another smaller room and kissed his twin girls. When he got downstairs, he ate his toast, drank his coffee, kissed his wife, but he didn't go to work. He went to the bank when it opened, withdrew all the money they had because he had been hiding the eviction notices for about a month and a half. He knew that on Wednesday, Two days later, that the sheriff was coming to evict him from his home. So he took all the money, left his wife, three kids, and he never came back. When they were evicted on that Wednesday, the mom with a stroller with three kids and a trash bag with everything in the refrigerator pushed the stroller three miles outside of town to an abandoned farm. She stayed in a chicken coop. She had to be there seven days before welfare would give her an apartment and food stamps. She lasted four. She ran out of food. A stranger walking by saw her and said, what are you doing? And she explained the whole story. And he said, I'll give you 20 bucks if you sleep with me. Now, hold on. I normally wouldn't be this rude, but somebody needs to know who's talking to him. That, that lady slept with the man, got pregnant, had a son, gave him one name, Reggie. I just told you my story. I'm the son of a prostitute, but Jesus. I had no last name till I was 13, but Jesus. I ain't number $20, but Jesus. Even though my mom gave me away, she gave me away to her favorite teacher at school. Hear what I do in public schools. I was raised by my mom's 10th grade English teacher. Her husband named Bill was a school janitor. At 13, I wanted to take my life. At three o'clock in the morning, crying in my bed, Bill, the janitor, walked in and told me that he loved me. He slept by my door for two days. But Jesus, I'm here to tell you that no matter if it looks like it's dead, it ain't dead till Jesus takes over. It looks like it ain't gonna work. It won't work till Jesus take over. Your life is gonna still be messed up till Jesus takes over. You got to let go, and you got to let God. So my mom gave me away to her 10th grade English teacher. Her name was Leela. Her last name, as you can see, was D-A-B-B-S. Her husband, Bill, school janitor, till the day he died, last name D-A-B-B-S. On the back of my jersey at the University of Tennessee, where I played defensive end, are the letters D-A-B-B-S. Why? because uh, it's cool they gave me my name. But you know what they did even more? They told me about Jesus. Hey, look, look, look. I live Easter every day because I'm still trying to figure out why would he die for me? My own mom didn't want me. Everybody threw me away. I'm just $20. But Jesus... But Jesus, but Jesus. Hey, I, I'm here all day. I'm doing something like at 3.30. Now I'm doing a leaders thing tonight. I'm going to lay hands on whoever the new leaders they're about to start. This is your lucky day. They work at me like a mug up in here on my first Sunday here. But that's cool. If you want to come back, come back. But I got to do two things. Number one, some of you have been carrying something too long. Some of you are walking behind the coffin of the dream that you had. Listen to me. Jesus is about to walk up to You know what Jesus did? I got to do it real fast. Let me finish it for you. Watch this real carefully. It says, then Jesus touched the coffin and the pallbearers stood still, all of them. And Jesus said to the dead boy, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead boy sat up in the coffin and he gave him back to his mother. 
that's really quick to simply say this. When you give something dead to God, it ain't going to stay dead anymore. When you give something messed up to God, it ain't going to stay broke no more. So when you give your life to God, he's going to fix your life. When you give your broken dream, he's going to fix it. If you give your hurt and your sorrow, he's going to fix it. He's going to fix it. He's going to fix it. I got to do this. I got to pray for two people. Number one, you're like me. Man, I could have held on to the past, the hurt, the pain, the, my mom gave me away, all that $20 bill. Uh-uh, I did not. I did not. You know why? Because I found something stronger than that hurt, stronger than that pain, stronger than that problem. And you know who it was? Jesus, 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 Jesus. You got to let go and you got to let God Listen, no, he's a gentleman. He would never force you to do something you don't want to do. So you keep holding on to that nasty. You keep holding on to that broken. Or you give it to God and watch what happens. So I don't know what you're carrying today. From the back to the front, left to the right, in any room, you're carrying something real bad. So I need everybody to cup your hands like this. Hey, do me a favor. Just sit down real fast. I'm going to do this real fast. Here's what don't you do. Cup your hands like this. Here's what you're holding. You're holding like that woman, what's dead? Her son, the one thing she thought she had to lean on is gone. But Jesus came. Now look, when Jesus walked over to the coffin and touched it, that woman could have said, leave it alone. Leave him alone. Don't touch that coffin. Leave it alone. And he would have. But guess what? There was something in her that said, let the God do what the God's going to do. You can tell God right now, leave me alone. Just leave it alone. I know I was hurt. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. No, or you can give it to God. I had to give my past to God. And when I finally did, I'm 60 years old. This morning before I came, my phone rang and a lady answered. And I said, hey, how you doing? 10 years ago, for the first time, her number rang my cell phone. And I picked it up and said, could I help you? And she said, I'm your mom. So I heard my mom's voice when I was 50 years old. Now, she's already called me twice today. She did it early this morning. I talked to her, but she did it while I was preaching the first service because she has dementia. She'll call me three more times before she goes to bed tonight. Now, my brother has already, his phone is linked to hers. Hear me out. He called me. He said, why are you? Why is she calling you so much? I'm going to block your number so she'll leave you alone. I said, no, 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 no. Let her call. He goes, how many times do you answer? I said, if I can, I answer every time. He goes, do you tell her she's already called you? I said, absolutely not. He goes, why didn't she call me? I said, because she raised you. I'm her biggest regret. And I had no idea. But if I'd have never let God heal me, I wouldn't be able to help her. I wouldn't be able to say, I love you, mom. Thanks for calling. If you ever need anything, let me know. You got to let go. So wherever you are watching this, hold it. Everybody got something. But if you're here and you say, I got to let this go. I can't hold it no more. And sometimes I think things and I probably shouldn't say them out loud, but I don't know how you're going to be able to stand up with rape. But if you do, God will turn it around. I don't know how you can stand up with abuse, but if you do, God will turn it around. Because if he could do it for me, he could do it for you. So I'm going to give you 13 seconds. You're holding something you got to let go. Gravity is your biggest nightmare right now because you don't want to stand, but you got to fight gravity right now. You got 13 seconds. Just stand and keep holding it like this. Whatever you got to get rid of, whatever you want to let go of, 13, 12. 11, 10, you're like, I got to let this go. Just stand. 9, 8, 7, this room, the other room. Come on. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, 1, in Jesus' name. Oh, look at everybody. Hey, I want you to do me a favor. Everybody say this with me. Say, Jesus, I need your help. I've held on too long. And today, I need to let go. I've lived in Saturday so long. But today, I need to let go. Help me, Jesus, to
to let go and let you. Help me, Jesus, to let go. So when I count to three, I want you to just take your hands and just put them up like this. A sign of surrender. Ready? One, two, three, go. Whatever it is, let go. Just let go, let go, let go. Now say this. Thank you, Jesus, for helping me let go. Now, Jesus, it's yours. Teach me faith in you no matter what. Everybody say amen.